so what we're working with today are our fraction exponents. Now, you guys have seen fraction exponents before, and normally we're multiplying, so you've got to add your exponents or something. We've never actually talked about what the frac fraction exponent represents. So a fraction exponent gets broken down into two pieces that we refer to as the P and the R. The top part, the P, represents the power. The R represents the root. So what happens with your fractional exponents is it creates a radical. And then remember, the radical, you have a root out in front of it. And then your power, that's just like any exponent that you're used to. So if I have, for example, 2 to the third power, you know that means 2 times 2 times 2. You multiply it three times. Your power is still exactly the same thing. What your root does is, again, that tells you your radical. So it might be like a square root or a cube root or a fourth root. It tells you which root you're looking for, and then the power tells you what you're looking for after that. When it comes to our fractional exponents, there's two ways you can figure out the answer. One way is to take care of the power first and then take care of the root. The other way is to figure out the root first and then take care of the power after that. So let's take a look at our example here. We have 125 to the 2 thirds power. So that means 2 is our power, 3 is our root. So the way I would write this is I'm finding the Q root, the third root, of 125 squared. So as I said, we're going to go through and evaluate the power first. So using your calculators, I want you to figure out what is 125 squared. going to be a huge number. Hmm? 15,625. So now we need to take the cube root of that. So if you don't know how to find the cube root, you want to push your math button. And then choice number four is your cube root. <coughs> So let's take the cube root of 15,625. Let's see what we get. 25. And that would be our answer for that one. So again, that's figuring out the power first and then taking the root. As I said, the other way you could go about it is taking the root first. So we would do the cube root of 125. And then the power would go outside of the radical because you would take care of that last. So let's figure it out that way. So let's do the cube root of 125. Use your calculator if you need to. And then we do 5 squared. What do we get? I personally like that way better. I think that's a little easier. You don't get such large numbers. But if you prefer the other way, you go right ahead and do whichever one you prefer. But as you can see, you get the same answer, whether you do your power first or your root first, we're going to get the same answers. So let's take a look at our examples we have down here. We have 8 to the 2 thirds power. So again, 2 is our power, so I'm going to put a little p. 3 is my root. So i got to put a little 3 outside of my radical sign, my third root of 8 squared. So what is our third root of 8? 2. And then I have to square it. So our final answer is 4. Now what's different about example 2? We've got a negative sign up here. Do you guys remember what happens with our negative exponents? Yeah, you got to move that down to the denominator. So what would I have left in my numerator? I would have to put a 1 there. I can't just have nothing there. So I would have a 1 up there. And so now I have 27 to the positive 2 thirds. Now we can rewrite it in our radical form. So our 1 over 
the third root of 27 squared. So what is the third root of 27? I heard a couple people say three. So then we gotta figure out three squared. So one over nine would be our final answer there. So why don't you guys take a minute, see if you can figure out number three there, our third example. So I think some people might be stuck at this point. Did you guys at least get the one over the fifth root of 32? All right. Now, a lot of you don't know how to do the fifth root in your calculator. So what we do is, since you want the fifth root, you've got to push your 5 first in your calculator. Then go to math. And this time you want choice 5, the one that's got the little x outside of the radical sign. And then you're 32, and you hit enter. So what do we get? What's our fifth root of 32? So 1 over 2. That's our final answer there. So you use that button for any root. If you try to find the seventh root of something for some reason, you would hit 7, math, choice 5. That would find any root for you. Even if you wanted to do just the square root, you could use that same button too and type in your 2 first. So then all of those examples so far have worked out really well because they were either perfect cubes or they were perfect squares or perfect fifths like in that last example. If it's not perfect, you have a few extra steps you have to do. So for this one, for example four, we would still turn this into the third root of 24 to the fourth power. And then many of you would go ahead and probably try to do the third root of 24, but you find it gives you a what? Decimal. We can't work with that. So what we have to do is we have to, thinking back to our radical day that we did a little while ago, we have to find the perfect cube that goes into 24. Think about a perfect cubes. 2 is not a perfect cube. 8 is a perfect cube. 8 and then our 3. The cube root of 8 is 2. And then I have my cube root of 3 still in there because that's not a perfect cube. But notice I still have my power of 4 on the outside. What do you think we do with that now? You got to distribute it to both things. So it's got to go to the 2 and to my radical. So I get 2 to the 4th cube root of 3 to the 4th. What is 2 to the 4th? I heard somebody say it. 16. And then it stays as the cube root of 3 to the 4th. There's really nothing else you can do with that. Do we see those ones as often? No. Generally it works out. They give you a nice number. Works out evenly like our other ones up there. But sometimes they do happen. So this next part saying is sometimes it's easier if you turn them into fractional exponents and then you can follow your normal exponent rules. So cube root of 2 to the 8th, how would I rewrite that using a fractional exponent? Well, our power has to be on the top, right? So our power is the 8. 3 is our root. So that would get rewritten as 2 to the 8 over 3 power. How about the next one? How could we rewrite that one? 2 to the what? There you go. Very good. 2 over 3 power. So now we follow our normal multiplication rules. I'm multiplying, so I need to add my exponents. So I keep my base of 2. 8 thirds plus 2 thirds. 10 thirds. So if we were to turn that back into radical form, what would that look like? This would be the third root of 2 to the 10th. 
Again, that doesn't work out well. There's no cube root of 2, so you could do like what we did back in example 4, but it didn't ask you to. Make this a little bigger. So if we take a look at example 6, let's rewrite that one as a fractional exponent. So I would get x to the what power? 6 over 3. Which, what is 6 over 3 for reduce it? 2. So sometimes you can actually do that. You turn it back into the fraction, and it reduces down nicely to you, so you get just a power up there, no more root. So this reduces down to x squared. 